Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of brands. Today, we're thrilled to host Ms. Kushnuma Kapadia, Vice President Marketing, South Asia for Marriott, Marriott International. A brand in the hospitality sector committed to improve the lives of the communities they serve and open doors to new opportunities. Welcome, Kushnuma. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Ritika. You're welcome. Uh, Marriott has recently, for their Bonvoy property, they have partnered with Ed Sheeran's Mathematics India Tour. So, I mean, that's a big one, being their loyalty partner. So, congratulations on that one. Thank and you. Uh, I also uh, sort of want to understand, you know, this partnership with Ed Sheeran is exciting, of course. But then how is the tour the best fit for Marriott Bonvoy? And uh, how do you sort of plan to leverage this high-profile collaboration and uh, in sort of... Uh, uh, enhancing not only member experiences but also amplifying the brand visibility so let me first start with amplifying the brand visibility because obviously that is the most obvious uh, you know goal for any brand right because we obviously want to position ourselves in a way that uh, we continuously become top of mind recall uh, amongst everything amongst all the categories that we are positioning our uh, different products and loyalty programs are just one such category where um, we believe strongly that it's still not, uh, it's still underused, to be honest, especially in the hospitality space. And uh, uh, the field is really large, the field is really wide for all players to really capture uh, the share of the pie. And uh, this is really our uh, critical objective and our vision, and it's a global objective and vision. We just recently signed up. We just recently signed up our 200, 200 million um, millionth member globally, and it's massive because what loyalty programs really project is the fact that you know you are really the top of mind and the most preferred. A product that your guests and your customers want to engage with and want to show their loyalty to. And from a business perspective, that is very, very critical to us, especially as the canvas of competition keeps getting wider and wider, right? So we do believe that loyalty programs is the way to go in terms of growing our business as well. And in terms of everything that we have to offer in terms of our facilities and our amenities within the hardware of our uh, of our uh, hotels. Right. Why Ed Sheeran, to be really honest with you, is that it's a huge platform. Uh, typically, we also partnered with Mumbai Indians two years back. And um, India is a very peculiar country um, in terms of what, what is it that clicks with the audience if you want to achieve large-scale visibility. So there is cricket, there is Bollywood, and now, of course, there's this whole world of entertainment when it comes to music and uh, we believe that uh, by partnering with such large scale large decibel events we are also able to provide moments that money can't buy which is really the ethos of what Marriott Bonvoy is all about and so uh, we recently partnered with Taylor Swift for the era store as well and it was a phenomenal success because a lot of people realized that you know, as a brand, we are really alternating away from hospitality into very, very virgin spaces to really connect and engage with our audiences and providing them with access that would otherwise be very far. Yeah. And which is the same philosophy for India as well, you know, whilst you can buy tickets and you can be in a general access area, but if you become a Marriott Bonvoy member and you engage with us on our sweepstakes, you get access to a private VIP lounge and who wouldn't want to be part of, uh, you know, an experience that uh, one is very uh, new into the yeah. country. I mean, I think Ed Sheeran's performing for the first time in yes. India, yes. especially on this scale. And then to watch it within the confines of a VIP lounge, as well as to have, you know, high net worth individuals around you. So it also provides you with a networking, uh, you know, uh, space. So really for us, uh, our big, big ticket is enrollments. Our big ticket is having people redeem their points, you know, into the, into the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, by and large, uh, giving the brand that level of mammoth publicity, which can only happen if you're partnering on this kind of a scale. And 
honestly the philosophies of marketing are also typically changing right we all realize that uh, india is a billion population country and you want to get the major share of that pie you need to make sure that you are partnering with people who have an equally big muscle and hence book my show came into the picture because they have a very very wide reach and we're trying to go into tier 2 tier 3 markets for for whom the audience finds events like this in a bombay city very aspirational so it it kind of you know hits at all uh, hits hits at all our uh, objectives and our goals and that was actually the idea of uh, putting our uh, muscle behind edge children right and uh, very rightly said and you also talked about how loyalty programs is really underutilized in india but globally it's a really big thing so uh, could you shed some light on sort of the growth trajectory of how loyalty programs has evolved in india market and any notable trends or factors that is driving this evolution yeah so actually um like i said what was loyalty programs within the travel space right the most popular one was the one that jet airways used to uh, you right. know really uh, uh, propagate to be honest until they of course uh, unfortunately shut down and we realized that a lot of people were travel jet airways right. only because they knew they could get points and they knew they could get free tickets and this was in an era where travel was not even so much in the front and center today post the pandemic we all realize and i say this on many many for- forums that travel has become the new it's not a cost anymore for a family it's an investment people want to invest in memories people want to invest lesser and lesser in material acquisitions and more and more into garnering experiences for themselves and which is where we come into the picture uh, with our loyalty program because what you get with this loyalty program is unbelievable benefits unbelievable number of room nights that you can avail of once you've earned points today you today once upon a time the myth was you can only avail of points when you stay with us but now you can avail of points even when you eat with us even a cup of coffee will give you points right, right? and so um also typically we have seen and this is very anecdotal so i i'm not really sure it's not necessarily backed by very heavy data analysis or statistics but india is a point junkie market you know we like to earn points on everything yeah. you and are rewarded for it. shopping or you know spending yeah, our money absolutely and yeah. and and it's also very hoda mindset to be yeah. honest with you so you want to earn points but you don't want to necessarily part with them because you feel oh my god let me just collect more and more and uh, more and we want yeah. to change that mindset right. we want to make sure that we tell our people that you can earn as well as you can redeem and right. these are some of the ways that we are kind of changing the mindset shift of how people are consuming us as well and how people need to consume loyalty programs because it's not just about acquisition you need to constantly keep engaging in the cycle by redeeming that's the only way you will be able to benefit from a loyalty program of such a stature you know of such a brand and and look at what it can give you when you are traveling it's it's an immense amount of benefit right so also another thing we need to understand is the fact that you know now hotels are penetrating into smaller and smaller and smaller you know tertiary markets as well and i mean this is this kind of reach this kind of a program in a market that is has no no exposure at all to what a loyalty program is is massive and we be, and we believe we can cash in on that as a first move off right so, so just just to add a little bit more on this i mean you know you go to a tier 2 market and all the individuals who live in urban setups believe that our tier 2 markets won't know about or what do they know about an edge here now what do they know but it's unbelievable how yeah. aspirational it is and how evolved and how well traveled uh people who reside in these markets are and we actually want to make sure we are reaching them with our loyalty program absolutely you know? and you rightly pointed out i mean uh, personally i observe this trend where the gen z in, in specifics if we talk is really obsessed with say a taylor swift or a rihanna yeah. for that matter and it's it goes beyond the demographics of say a tier 1 and tier 2 so i'm i mean you right well, about rihanna that has now become the, rihanna is now the new icon right. of india with right. the fact that you know of course the ambani is used up for the jamnagar you know extravagant zar so right. clearly now 
if you realize she's been put on the i wouldn't say on the international i mean she's obviously very popular but she's literally on the national landscape now you know so somebody sitting in a small little town is going to know who rihanna is absolutely so let's not underestimate how much people are now getting onto the bandwagon of international stars as well and we want to be able to provide those kind of experiences and those kind of moments for our guests without any sort of discrimination right right uh, of course and uh, uh, with new uh, and young consumers coming into the picture i mean your target audience is also expanding by the day so it's it's important for you to also sort of get the next generation of travelers on board with uh, marriott yeah. so what are the strategies in place for uh, you know uh, resonating with the younger audiences considering their expectations and consumer pa- uh, consumption patterns and behaviors are continuously evolving yeah so ritika you know we've been working with the millennial mindset for a very very long period of time mm-hmm. i mean i remember 4 5 years not even 4 5 years back 6 7 years back it was literally on our strategy map because individuals who were in the you know in the gen z I don't know Gen Z, right? Uh, in the Gen Z, you know, category of individuals, we knew they were going to now they were going to soon become the customers who had that kind of financial propensity and the discerning power to spend at our hotels. And so we wanted to speak their language and any kind of strategy. If you want to bring it to fruition, you've got to be very forward thinking. It's not like today I think of this strategy and tomorrow I'm going to be able to execute it and I'm going to see those levels of success. you need right. to have the foresight to be able to put things into motion and into a certain wheel churn from certain period of times that you see that you know it's a long term play let's just put it that way in a nutshell and so we've been working with that mindset right from data analysis to insights to what is it that is going to trigger or uh, something inside these this new generation to want to stay with us and to want to travel with us and to want to stay with us and and then we engineered our product accordingly we engineered our marketing strategy accordingly we are very very heavily invested in the digital space we have an entirely curated evolved digital arm that is constantly evolving with technology with newer ways to function in a room you know no longer are we constantly living in the archaic ways of you know even our room product because your room product also has to appeal to a new gen right a new these these young kids are not going to go finding a switch they are not going to be able, they are not they don't have the bandwidth or the patience for that so you've yeah. got to make everything accessible at the tip of your at the tip of their finger you've got to make sure social media is accessible you've got to make sure ott platforms are accessible within the confines of their stay so even the food even the food that you curate in our restaurant now needs to be different it needs to be appealing it's not just about putting a chicken tikka on a plate it's about how you present that chicken tikka so you don't ever forget the core basics of hospitality because that's those tenets will never change but you've got to make sure that your strategy evolves around a way that it's changing with the times and right. marriott is very very heavily invested in that right right of course and these par- marketing partnerships are a way and a means of doing that we recently tied up with hdfc to come out with the co-branded uh, you know travel card which is a first cra- credit card travel credit card in in india and uh, it's a fantastic tool for young uh, for young kids because uh, not for young kids for young adults because they have this credit card and you know you can use this credit card anywhere you don't have to use it just within marriott you can use it anywhere and earn points and so you're creating an entire generation of responsible travelers right i mean sure i'm sure it takes a lot of hard work to make everything palatable for the young adults but apart yeah. from that uh, you spoke about it's how it's not just palatable it's making sure that they are hooked on to you otherwise they can move they can move to the next best best thing very very fast right, right. You know? it's a fickle mindset let's be honest yes absolutely uh you really spoke about uh, the uh, you know experiential part of things and how it's really important for people today to invest in experiences so i'm sure this collaboration is one part of it uh, there must be other uh, you yeah. know uh, experiential offerings from you also that you sort of leverage 
so then uh, one could you talk about that a little and also what type of specific experiences resonate most with the consumers of today so it's a plethora of things to be honest i think the most is now ritika very it's long gone i mean nobody is nobody is loyal to one experience right because obviously social media has created an entire gamut of a mindset where you want to be uh, with it right you want right. to be woke you want to make sure that if you are experiencing something then i'm going to join that bandwagon as well and just in the language of the millennials millennials right you feel the fomo correct yeah. so um i don't think there's one thing that can really hook you on it's you've got to experiment and you've got to be everywhere so right. we done we've also partnered with the australia tennis open that relationship has been extremely successful successful one for the last 3 years you know and and we've seen some phenomenal results in terms of redemption and in terms of partners and in terms of endorsements from the tennis stars and so that's the world of sports we've been where we partnered partnering with manchester united we right. also did ipl which is cricket is the real cricket is religion in in india so it's not just music we've actually gone across the board last year we had a massive shaadi by marriott event which was anchored by karan johar so we are not restricting ourselves only to you know one avenue right it's music it's in india i mean it's relevant in india bollywood sports i mean we were also in i think if i'm not mistaken and one year we also partnered with the oscars you know so my point is globally we are present in large scale um, you know events which give us that kind of bump up in our brand visibility right right uh you talked about your partnership with mumbai indians in the past then we also talked about uh, the global partnership with taylor swift yeah. so since taylor swift is in the same music category as ed sheeran so were there any specific learnings globally that you would like to put into india market to you know sort of push the envelope when it comes to this tour and catering to the audiences oh uh, learnings i think it's a uh, that would be a little tough to answer to be honest because honestly um these partnerships are by and large pretty successful you know in the way they are designed and in the way they are um, engineered you know to kind of customize itself to the interest levels but probably the only learning i would say is that you know taylor swift was performing in different parts of asia so obviously there is that feeling of you know she's not performing in india correct so my point is unfortunately so the mindset is that let us promote her you also that in case somebody wants to travel because we are looking at individuals who travel across continents right but i do feel that when you partner in a in a setup which is happening in the country and where people get a touch feel and sample those are definitely more successful than just trying to promote something that is not necessarily happening within your ambit of influence so i think from a learnings perspective that would be one of the biggest learnings i think the second biggest learning is you know it's it's incredibly hard to manage the whole process of celebrities right so you've got to make sure that as far as your strategy is concerned you've got all your ducks in a row before you put your finger in this pie because it's a complicated and complex process so i can i may want to give the world of an experience to my customer but if it doesn't resonate with the singer or it doesn't resonate with you know with the star then that becomes a very tricky situation because you're caught between um uh, between the customer who you want to provide everything to and within the limitations of what your partnership can help you provide so the process is very tedious and very laborious i think the contracting process is a very complex so that takes up a huge chunk of your time but other than that i think it only drives benefit right right yeah uh I picked up on uh, a line where you said that uh, we have had the millennial mindset for a very long time. So how do you see uh, when I talk about the marketing strategy for Marriott as a whole? Uh, how do you see the marketing strategy evolving in the future, and how far has it has it evolved in the last few years? 
So the last few years was really a 50-50 balance between, or not a 50-50, I think that would be premature. It was a 60-40 balance between doing a lot of offline vis-a-vis, a lot of online strategies when it came to our marketing mix. I think that entire uh, dynamic, that entire dynamic has completely changed. It's completely become, you know, sort of lopsided in a way that now digital has become right. huge. It's become massive, right? So all sorts of uh, digital strategies are now getting incorporated. And we believe that the world is, that is the way to go. That is how the world is going to consume brands. That is that is the way the world is going to consume information. Right. So today, look at newspapers. How many people are picking up a newspaper vis-a-vis reading news online? So my point is that that has completely changed the dynamics of the way we do marketing. And I totally believe that if you are not on the digital bandwagon, you may as well get out of the get out of the race because clearly technology is the future and social media and, and the usage of influencers and how you can make them work for your category, not just going en masse, but making influencers entrenched into your brand so that you get that social media endorsement from, uh, you know, from major influencers is really the key to how you really need to engineer your marketing strategies. Right, right. And any future strategies that uh, Marriott have in pe- has in place for further member acquisition and engagement in the future? Yeah, so we do want to explore the credit card space a lot more. We do want to make sure that we are, you know, we partnered with a lot of celebrity chefs in the past for our uh, food and beverage options. So we want to see how we can you know, sort of uh, dynamically amplify that and make our, uh, you know, partnerships a lot more interesting and a lot more uh, palatable and a lot more large in the way we present our format. Because uh, today, nothing in small measures works. You know, you either go the whole way. I think I think we've seen that in the recent <laughs> that's, times, that's right? exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Um, nobody's doing anything in small measures anymore, including weddings. So my point is that, well, clearly that is the way, you know, today brands can cut from the cut through the clutter and kind right. of stand out. So obviously right. the strategies are going to be involved in these, you know, in these uh, allied partnerships rather than just traditional partnerships of hospitality. Right. So go big or go home, basically. Yeah, it is. I think it is that. I mean, it's go big or go home, really. Right. You know? right. Anything else that you'd like to add? No, not at all. I just think thank you so much. And I just like to really urge, you know, everyone who's uh, seeing this uh, and listening to this, that they really need to, if they really want to engage with Marriott, then they need to sign up and, you know, they need to become Marriott Bonvoy members. And this is not a marketing pitch, but clearly, you know, uh, it's 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 a fantastic loyalty program to be a part of. <laughs> thank you so thank much you for doing this today I really appreciate it thank you so much thanks a lot see you bye bye